is Amanda from The Fundamental Home, and it is Friday, which means it's Fundamentally Frugal Friday, and I am here with this week's Fundamentally Frugal Tip. This week, I wanna encourage you, it's summer. If you have children who are home and they're bored, a great thing to do with them during the summer is cook with them, teach them to cook. This is the perfect time where everybody's free of distractions, there's not too many other things going on, and you can focus and make it a time where you teach them to cook and to purchase your groceries and even plan and budget like you do. So if your children are sitting around bored, put them to work doing something. It'd be a great time to get them their own Pinterest page, have them start pinning recipes that they like, and try to encourage them to um, even look at the ingredients that you have in your house, look them up on the Pinterest search bar, and find recipes that match the ingredients in your house so you don't have to go out and buy anything extra, but they can find something fun to make and entertain themselves. And it'll be tasty for the whole family. It's really a great thing to do all over, all around, so just, if you are looking for something to do, something inexpensive, something that's helpful and encouraging to your family, go ahead and teach them to cook this summer and that'll be good for you and for them. So that's this week's Fundamentally Frugal Tip. And it is also Frugal Family Food Friday. And this week, I am doing the Frugal Family Food. And actually, not just me. Tangie did a great recipe yesterday. So I'm gonna go right up here. I always get it wrong. Pratt Family Homestead, you've got me paranoid now. But I've got it. <laughs> Up here somewhere, I'm gonna to link to Tangi and her recipe. And uh, you can see how, um, what a great Mexican dish she made. She made, a, I think she called it Mexican enchilada pizza, right? So go take a look at her dish and you've got two great frugal family food recipes from me and Tangi this week. So that's an exciting thing. So I asked on my Worthy Wednesday video if anybody had anything that they would like me to make and I got one response. And the one person who asked, asked if I would make chicken soup, my family's chicken soup. So I said, if nobody else asks, and this is the one, then I'm gonna go ahead and make chicken soup. So guess what? I'm making our family's chicken soup. So I have everything kind of halfway prepared over here. I'm gonna take you over and you can look and see what we have. And I'm gonna show you how to make chicken soup my way. Okay, here we have the ingredients for my chicken soup. And you see right here, I have one onion that I've already diced in here. It's little teeny little dices, not, I mean, not too, too teeny, but just little teeny little squares. And I don't uh, pre-cook them. I just put them in raw like that. Then I have um, five potatoes that I went ahead and cubed up and got them ready. I have some cream of chicken soup. In this pitcher, I have some water back here. See my pretty green pitcher? I love it. Anyway, water back in there and over here, I have my chicken and this I have it upside down so let me turn it around for you these are chicken thighs and you can see that I paid two dollars and fifty five cents for the entire package of chicken thighs I am going to put the chicken thighs in my pot okay but I won't necessarily eat all of this meat once I cook it even though I'm gonna cook it with the soup I might actually take some of the meat and use it for another meal we'll see how much meat I have at the end so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of this chicken meat into the pot, and on top of that I'm gonna put this potato, and I'm gonna put this onion, and I'm gonna put one can of the cream of chicken soup, and I'm going to take this carrot right here, and I'm going to take this peeler, and I'm gonna peel the carrot in here. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm gonna do in a second, but let me get everything else ready, and I will show you what I do with the carrot. Okay, so I'm sitting right here by my pot, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this carrot that I've already cut the ends off and peeled, and I'm going to shred it, well, peel it, into my pot. So let me show you how I do that. All I do is I take this peeler, and I'm just gonna start shredding it straight into my pot. And I'm just gonna keep doing it. I do one end at a time, and I do it in kind of small shreds. The shreds look like this. The whole carrot looks like this. So you're talking half this, this is a good sized carrot, so about half the size. And as I get down to the bottom, I just kind of uh, get that edge off and then move my hand back, okay? And I'm gonna keep peeling until I get this entire carrot, and this is, like I said, a pretty large carrot, peeled into the pot. And to me, this, it doesn't really save time, I guess, because really if you're good at chopping vegetables, then um, it would probably take just as much time 
but um, I don't know I just kind of like how pretty it looks in the pot like this and to me it's just a little bit more simple to just have these shreds sitting on top so I'm just about done I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause for a minute and show you what it looks like with the shreds on it see right there is what it looks like we have the carrots on top we have the potatoes there's the onions and underneath the onions we have the chicken so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take this cream of chicken soup and I'm gonna put some of that on top and then I'm gonna put the water in so let me get that done so I'm gonna take my cream of chicken and pour it in here use a spoon make sure I get it all out okay there's the cream of chicken sitting right on top just one can not both of them even though I have two over here I'll tell you what happens with the other one now I'm gonna pour got my water I'm gonna pour water in and what I want to do is I want to get all of this covered it's really going to be filled almost to the top so this whole pitcher so probably maybe I don't know if that's a half a gallon or a gallon but a good amount of water and you can see it's almost filled up to the top and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on high and get it on boiling and get it boiling and I'm gonna stir everything up and what I usually like to do is put the lid on um, because I like for my potatoes to get good and soft so I'll put the lid on and get that boiling and let it simmer uh, once I get it boiling I'll turn it down and let it simmer for probably about 20 minutes and then I'll cook it probably another 20 minutes without the lid on okay I'm gonna let that get cooked and then I will come back and tell you how I finish my chicken soup okay so I just checked on the chicken soup and I wanted to let you know that it's been cooking for the 40 minutes the 20 minutes covered the 20 minutes uncovered and it's still not done yet so I wanted to warn you that the way that I know that it's done is not the timing the way that I know it's done is when I can take the chicken and it's on the bone and I can take it off the bone very easily it just like falls off the bone and so I'm gonna give it probably another 10 minutes just because and uh, see how it is then it should be okay by then but anyway what you're looking for is it falls off the bone now I use bone in chicken number one because it's cheaper and number two because it's more flavorful the bones for some reason really add something to the soup but you can certainly use boneless skinless if that's what you have and I've used that before it's not quite as flavorful but it still tastes very good and then all you're looking for is that it easily comes apart and shreds because you're gonna shred it and put it in the soup so I'm gonna let it keep cooking and I'm gonna come back when it's shredded and ready to go in um, while I have you here I am gonna tell you that we used to make this soup as a chicken noodle soup and what we would do is about 10 minutes before the end we would just put some um, the wide egg noodles maybe half a bag whatever would we could fit into the pot <laughs> um, in about 10 minutes before it was done and let that cook and then you know take the meat off the bones and it would be done um, but since we are gluten free now and we're not using noodles what we are using instead is we make rice and I have um, two cups of rice that it was two cups dry that I cooked and so the rice is sitting there waiting to go into the soup when we're done and I'm gonna show you how we serve it when I'm done because I don't just throw the rice into the pot at least not immediately I'll show you what we do here in a little bit okay so I just pulled the chicken out and you can tell like when I it's just fallen right off the bone so I just want to show you how I, how I clear it this skin was on top of this I went ahead and just cleared the skin off and all I'm gonna do is just completely take all of the meat off of the bone okay I'm gonna take any kind of this uh, yucky stuff here we're gonna get rid of that I'm gonna take this meat here I'm just gonna separate the meat from all of the the yuckiness okay and I'm gonna just discard the things that are yucky and keep this meat and I'm gonna go ahead and shred it and then put it back in the pot now I think I'm just gonna take maybe two or three of these depending on how much meat I have and put that in the pot and then uh, the other one or two I'll save the meat from that and use it for something else okay so I've already put two of the chicken thighs the meat of them into the soup pot and you can see it in there I'm gonna get a scoop and show you that in one second and here is the meat from the other two chicken thighs I think that I have enough in the soup pot that I don't need the rest of this 
So I think I'm gonna put this aside and use it for like white chicken chili or something else. But look, you can see that the soup is plenty meaty. Like when I get a sco scoop, there's loads of meat in that scoop. You see that in there? And uh, you can see all the potatoes and the carrots and there's onions in there. Doesn't matter what kind of scoop I get, I'm getting chunks of meat. So anyway, there's plenty of meat, I think, for this. So I think we'll be okay with uh, just adding this, putting this aside and using it for a different meal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take another can of cream of chicken and I'm going to put that in the soup and it just makes it creamier, it makes it a creamier meal. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then I'm gonna plate it and you can see what the actual serving size looks like. Okay, so here's my bowl and I took a scoop of white rice and I put it in the middle and rounded it over and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour our soup over top. Now like I said I use white rice um, but you know we've used jasmine, we used brown, whatever we have. This just happened to be what I had on hand right now that was already open and easy to access. Um, I, like I said I made two cups of the white rice so everybody's gonna get a scoop this size in their bowl and then I'm going to pour the soup over it. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, like I said, the alternative is to use some wide egg noodles and cook them in the soup pot for just a few minutes. And uh, then you'd have it as noodle soup rather than with rice, but of course we're gluten free so we do it with rice. Any of the leftover rice, and we're always going to have leftovers, we always do, we put the leftover rice in with the soup. All of the leftover rice, there's my rice, goes in with the soup. And then it goes, this is what we're doing right now, but all of that goes into the refrigerator and all the rice soaks up the delicious juice in the chicken and if I want to reheat it the next day I just add some water to it, enough to give it a, a watery consistency and then we have a second day's worth of soup and everybody likes this soup the second day better than the first. So here's my bowl and I'm going to take a scoop of this and put it right on top. And I'll get a little scoop of the liquid here and I'll add that too. And it's a nice bowl that's going to steam up that camera so I'm going to take it a little bit away. Let me set it on the counter here. One thing that we do is we add a little salt and pepper to the bowl. So I'll just put a little bit of salt, just pour it in my hand and then sprinkle it on top. Okay. And a little bit of pepper. And that's my chicken soup. That right there once I get my spoon, I'll stir it up, the kids will stir it up. And like I said, if you made it with the, with the noodles rather than the rice, you'd, it'd look a little bit different. But this is exactly what we eat when I make chicken soup. It's delicious, everybody loves it. Really, really inexpensive meal. So that's it, that's my chicken soup recipe. And you can see why it's frugal because um, the chicken thighs that I used were 255 and I only used half of them. So essentially $1.20 worth of meat for a whole pot that's gonna last us two meals. It's gonna last us dinner and lunch tomorrow. And then I used um, a dollar's worth because they're uh, the cans of cream and chicken soup were 49 cents each. If on the second day, if I had an extra can of cream and chicken soup, don't have to, but if I did, I might add another one in just because it makes it more creamy. But you don't have to, just adding the water makes it taste just fine. It, I, we all enjoy it the second day, like I said, better than the first. Um, and then of course the other ingredients that we use, the onions, potatoes, carrots, those are things that we just always have on hand and they're not terribly expensive. I bought the potatoes the other day for $3.49 for a 10 pound bag and I just used five of those potatoes. There's a ton more of the potatoes because they weren't like really huge ones, it was smaller potatoes in the bag. So um, it really uh, is a cost effective meal for my family of five, like I said, for two meals you're probably talking um, one, two, three, maybe $3.50 divided by two because it's two meals so you're talking a dollar 75 ish for each meal i mean it's it's really not expensive this is a super frugal meal one that we have very frequently very frequently even when you add the rice in i think it's super inexpensive so that's just an estimate i'm not giving you exact numbers but you did see the exact number on the chicken and i did tell you the exact number on the potatoes and you guys can figure out how much carrots and onions cost they're not super expensive rice is not super expensive Cream of chicken soup, like I said, was 49 cents at Aldi for each can. So, I mean, you're really talking um, 
super frugal meal, something that will last for two meals, something that everybody enjoys, which is hard to come by. And of course you can serve this chicken soup with, um, and we're gonna serve it with some salad. We have uh, leftovers, <laughs> you know how we do. We just buy whatever we have. So we have leftover um, tomatoes and onions, of course, and lettuce and celery and all kinds of other things that we're gonna throw in because um, the lettuce was already cut up because we had tacos last night and we actually had it the night before but we still have lettuce left <laughs> so we're trying to use up all those extras by having a salad with our soup and if you were a gluten person you could even have a nice crusty piece of bread we used to eat this with garlic bread so any of those things would work uh, for side dishes to go along with this but frankly it works by itself just nice too um, sometimes we've even had it with popcorn in the winter so whatever you want to do with it you can so very flexible meal Anyway, that is it. It is my second frugal family food meal, yay! So hopefully I'll be doing some more here in the future. Um, if there are any other frugal family food meals that you would like me to make, any of my meals, uh, let me know and I will make sure that I get them done for you. But otherwise, that is it for today. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you all for tuning in to my frugal family food meal. And make sure you check out the other Frugal Family Food Meals. I'll link to the playlist up here. There are a ton of great meals on that list. I can't even begin to tell you all the wonderful things that are on there. So you need to check those out for sure. Lots of great stuff there. And lots of great stuff coming because we've got more people in line for the next several weeks. And Tangie and I are talking about doing a special week of Frugal Family Food coming up here soon. So be on the lookout for that. So. Anyway, you guys have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.